Since getting our Jeep JL Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited back in February, Cindy and I have had an opportunity to test it out both on and off-road, completely stock. With a budget boost, and more recently, with a basic but an affordable spring lift. Today, we're gonna to be swapping out our suspension system yet again, and this time, to install and test out a brand new premium entry-level lift kit made by Dynatrack, the Enduro Sport. Ooh, look at that, embroidered. Ooh, instructions in a fancy plastic bag. Front coils. Rear coils. For your sway bar links. Front bump stop extensions. Rear bump stop extensions. All kinds of miscellaneous hardware. Looks like some flag nuts. And a bunch of Fox 2.0 shocks. Fox 2.0 shocks. Now by premium, I am referring in part to the fact that this kit does cost a bit more, about $1,200. But I am also taking into account that they come with coils that have been specifically designed to work with custom tuned Fox 2.0 monotube shocks. In addition to the coils and shocks that you get with this kit, you also get sway bar links for the rear, front and rear bump stop extensions, front brake line relocation brackets, and these look like flag nuts that go for the front bump stops. Basically everything that you need to get your Jeep JL Wrangler Sport or Sahara running on a set of 35 inch tires or a Rubicon running on a set of 37s. All right, so let's get this lift kit installed. Long ratchet extension, 21 millimeter socket, impact wrench, make sure it's on reverse. So I'm going to start by removing the bolt, securing the track bar to the front axle and any other components that I can think of that would be easier while the Jeep is on the ground. Now we're going to go ahead and grab an 18 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. Remove the sway bar links. Now that we've got everything unbolted up front that we want to get unbolted, all I have to do is unplug the front locker and the FAD and we can get this Jeep raised up. Okay, so now that the Jeep is up in the air, we can go ahead and take these floor jacks, raise the front axle a bit and remove the front wheels. 22 millimeter socket, a lug nut key. So now we can finish removing the shocks. All right, so now we can go ahead and disconnect the brake line relocation bracket that we have installed. They're gonna come off because we're gonna install the Dynatrack ones instead. The factory bolt that you see here is gonna require a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, so there are a few of these Christmas tree mounts that are securing various wiring to the frame itself. And in this case, the brake line bracket, this is the breather hose for the axle. And you're just gonna wanna disconnect a few of these because once you start uh, flexing out, these will actually get hang up and become a problem. 
You can see that there, there are additional connectors that go onto the frame rail itself. And I removed them all from the backside just so that the locker wiring will actually have an easier time dropping down without getting pulled out. Over on the passenger side, you can see I disconnected the FAD wiring from the frame rail as well. Uh, there is actually a connection here, but um, I went ahead and zip tied it in place because it'll help keep it from getting into the coils. All right, so now that everything's disconnected or removed that needs to be removed, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the axle just a bit more so that I can go ahead and remove the bump stop extensions and then pull out the coils. Get a ratchet. 9 16th inch socket, 9 16th inch wrench. Just for comparison's sake, we're gonna take our factory coils, these are for Rubicon Unlimited, and we're gonna check them against the Dynatrack coils. You can actually see right here that the passenger front is taller than the driver's side front. But the Dynatrack coils, they're all made the exact same length, side by side. So you can see they are slightly taller, but of the same length, and it has more winds. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the Dynatrack brake line relocation brackets, as you can see right here. So I'm gonna grab some of the hardware for it. I think that should be everything that we need. I'll need a couple more washers. As you can see here, there are the two different brackets that you have. This one right here is the driver's side because you can tell because of the slot right here. And this is the passenger side. Okay, so we can go ahead and install this bracket onto the frame and you can see there's actually a peg that goes right into this hole. Helps it to get indexed in place. Okay, and as before, we're gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket to tighten it up. Now using the hardware that Dynatrack provides, we can go ahead and secure brake line bracket in place and to tighten it up we're going to use a 7 16 inch wrench on both ends now we're ready to install our brand new Dynatrack coils but before we do that we're going to take one additional step and that's because we have this heavy steel bumper made by LOD and we also have a Warren Xeon 10s winch both together weigh quite a bit, and from all the lifts that we've installed so far, we've seen that the front end will sag about three quarters of an inch. So, to help accommodate for that, you can see these coil spacers are only about three quarters of an inch thick, and exactly what we're gonna need to make up the difference. So this is actually gonna be a little bit tricky, being that these upper spring isolators are indexed and they actually have these little nubs that need to go in a very specific set of points in the upper spring perch. Now the coil spacers need to go on first. Sheesh, tight fit. But these guys need to still be indexed. You can see how it's a little bit thinner on one side and a little bit thicker on the other. So we'll slide this on. I'm pretty sure it was right about there. All right, looks like we can start wrapping things up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a front coil, bump stop extension, flag nut, washer and bolt. We're gonna take the bolt, slip it through the washer, into the bump stop extension, place it underneath the coil, slip the coil in, slide it in place. Now you can see right here, this lower isolator is indexed and you can see the coil is not quite there yet, so I'm gonna to need to rotate this around until it's in place. Now we can take our bump stop extension, slip it into the coil. To secure the bump stop in place, we're gonna need a 5 16 inch Allen wrench or an eight millimeter like this. And I like to use it as a bit because it's easier to work with. So Dynatrack was very cool. Thank you Dynatrack for making this. This right here is a flagged nut. Getting these guys secured to the axle is actually kind of a pain without it, so you guys are awesome. Now, in order to install these, we're gonna actually take off the bracket securing the brake line to the axle itself, because when all is said and done, this will come out the back and be hidden by all this right here. So we're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bracket now. With that out of the way, we can now slip this 
flag nut up underneath the spring perch. No other wrench is necessary. That's pretty handy. Let's go ahead and put this back on while we're at it. So you can see right here, there's a tab that needs to go into that slot right there. So none of these shocks are labeled, but fortunately it's pretty easy to figure out which shocks are which. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull them all out now and find out. So it's pretty easy to see that these are longer, so these have to be rear shocks. But just for fun, let's go ahead and cut these open and measure them against our factory shocks. Get some dikes to cut these things open. So we'll grab the front shocks first. You can see they're strapped in place with these big heavy duty straps because these are high pressure monotube shocks. We're really gonna wanna come undone. Wow, so pretty. Okay, stand clear. For comparison's sake, let's grab a rear shock. See how much longer they are compared to the fronts. So we have a factory front and factory rear. Compare that to these new Fox shocks. You can see they're quite a bit longer. Okay, so we can go ahead and install this shock now. Just like before, we're gonna go ahead and use an 18 millimeter socket to get it on. We'll tighten those up to torque spec shortly. All right. Grab a torque wrench. Set it to 81 foot pounds of torque. Pop on our 18 millimeter socket. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is raise the axle, be mindful not to lift our Jeep up off the rack and we're gonna to try to make it so that the bottom mounts of the shocks just are fitting into the mount points on the axle. All right, since we're running these Evo adjustable lower control arms, we no longer have the point where these brake line brackets were attached to it. So a while back, we went ahead and drilled out the existing hole that was there so that we can attach it to the lower shock bolt, you can now secure it in place. Okay, we're gonna grab our torque wrench again. This time for the lower bolts, Dyntrack is calling for 80 foot pounds of torque. That's what I'm gonna set it for now. Front end is almost done. All right, so I think we can go ahead and reinstall our sway bar links at the very least, and then we'll go ahead and reconnect all our wiring, like the front locker and FAD. On the driver's side link, Dynatrack provides this spacer that goes in between the mount on the axle and the sway bar link itself. So I should point out that uh, a while ago, we installed a previous lift, which required us to relocate our factory rear sway bar links and install them up front because they're actually a bit longer. The Dynatrack kit calls for the same. According to Dynatrack, the sway bar link bolts need to be tightened up to 69 foot-pounds of torque. Okay. Now we can go ahead and plug all our wiring back in. with the exception of the front track bar, which we'll actually reinstall once the full weight of the Jeep is back on the ground. Uh, I think we've got everything installed that needs to be installed up front. So let's get the front tires back on. I'm going to 
millimeter socket. Make sure the track bar is not going to get bound up by anything as we lower it back on the ground. Looks like everything else is clear. Just triple check everything. All right, everything looks good. Let's get this thing back on the ground so we can tighten up our lug nuts to Torx back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead now and tighten up the wheel lug nuts to a Torx spec, which should be 130 foot pounds. Extension, 22 millimeter socket, and our key. All right, you can see that the track bar is not really aligned, but we expect it as much. So now we're gonna have someone sit inside the driver's seat, turn the steering wheel just a bit so that we can get the holes to align. We're gonna use our 21 millimeter socket again and an impact wrench. Now that we've got our bolt into the track bar, we can go ahead and tighten it up. Now we can go ahead and tighten it up to 125 foot-pounds of torque. There you have it, the front end's done. Now we just gotta do the rear. Well, hi Tessa, it's good to see you. Gonna help out with the install today? Good girl. Time to get going on the rear. Grab some tools ahead of time. Things that we know we're gonna need. Just like we did up front, we're going to use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the track bar bolt, securing it to the axle. All right, using an 18 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the shocks at the lower mounts. And using the same 18 millimeter socket and wrench, we're going to take off the sway bar link. Now we can disconnect the wiring for the rear locker. All right, we can go back up again. Get a load of this, the coils already came out. Literally. In the past, the emergency brake cables, because they are routed up and over a cross, uh, cross member, would have made it a lot more difficult to remove these. But because we relocated them on a previous lift, the axle just drops all the way down and voila, they're already out. All right. Get this other coil out while I'm thinking about it. Tires on the ground a bit. All right, let's get these tires off. So now we can go ahead and remove the shock's completely from the frame. 18 millimeter socket is what we're gonna need, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get impact on there. So we'll just use a regular wrench to loosen it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the sway bar links now. And kind of like the factory, these aftermarket ones that we got need to be held in place with an Allen wrench. We're gonna to have to remove these bump stop extensions that we have from the previous lift because we're gonna use ones from Dynatrack. Just for fun, let's compare those rear coils too. Let's see, I got a driver side rear. Passenger, you can see the passenger side, again, is slightly taller than these Dynatrack coils. Let's compare them. Here you can see that they're taller, but both of the same length. Let's get these coils installed. 
So there are part numbers on these springs, so I'm going to assume that means there's a, a top and a bottom. So we're going to make sure that the part number is legible. And then we're going to grab our upper spring isolator, which is indexed, as you can see here. And we're going to make sure that it is situated accordingly. Now this is really tough because there's nothing that's going to want to hold the rear coils in place. So we're going to have to actually do a dance of trying to get the coils in and raising the axle and kind of positioning it until everything is situated. So we're going to go back and forth a couple times. But let's get started. So as you can see here on top of the isolator, there is this little nub that's pointing up. There's actually a little hole up here as well, just like we saw up front. And we're going to need to rotate this so that it actually goes into that hole once we're installed. So I'm going to go ahead and take the jack, start raising it up a little bit so that this stays in place, and then we'll go over to the passenger side. Same as before, we want to make sure that it's legible. Take our upper spring isolator and index it. Like I got it. A little more pressure, just hold everything in place. Now we can install our bump stop extensions. Okay, let's go ahead and assemble our bump stop extensions. Grab some hardware. As you can see, the holes are offset. They're not dead center, and so are the ones on the factory axle. We're going to go ahead and make sure they're placed accordingly. Just like the front bumps up extensions, you're going to need a 5 16th inch Allen bit or an 8 millimeter bit, either one works, and a 9 16th inch wrench to tighten up these bolts. Time for the sway bar links. Using a 19 millimeter socket and wrench or a three quarter, which is basically the same, we can go ahead and tighten these up now. Grabbing our 18 millimeter socket and 18 millimeter wrench, we can now install the sway bar link onto the axle. Getting close. Time to grab one of our shocks. Using an 18 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and speed this along. On the home stretch. All right, just like the front shocks, the upper bolts going to need to be tightened up to 81 foot pounds of torque and the lower bolt 80 foot pounds of torque. Before I forget, the factory rear sway bar links need to be tightened as well to torque spec. The lower bolt's going to be 69 foot-pounds of torque, and the upper bolt's going to be 80 foot-pounds. Just triple checking everything here. Everything's installed properly. Coils are seated. I'm going to go ahead and plug in our wiring for our rear locker again. Lock it in place. Trap bar we'll worry about once we've got the full weight of the vehicle on the ground. I think it's time to get those wheels and tires back on. One more look around. Make sure the track bar's out of the way. Okay. Let's get this thing back on the ground. Look sharp. I'm glad we put in those coil spacers. It looks really level right now. Awesome. 
Let's get those lug nuts torqued. And that's it. All we need to do is go ahead and get this uh, track bar reinstalled. Let's see how far off we are. Oh, we're pretty close. Let's wrap this thing up. 125 with my 21 millimeter socket. All right, now we're done. Looks outstanding. As some of you may know, Cindy and I have had a chance to test out this Dynatrack lift a few months back, and we've already established that it's actually a really great kit. In fact, based on it, we found that it offers a super smooth ride, and can even do a great job of wheeling on easy to moderate trails. But I think what we all want to know is, how will it do on something like the Rubicon Trail? Go, 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 go. Nice.